Hi guys, Josh here. Today I wanted to talk about the latest update that I've been working on for the MD-11. There hasn't been an FG add-on release in about a month because I've been working on a ton of new features and I've also been a little bit busy. So um, today there's a bunch of new stuff but today I want to just talk about FMS speed which is now available. I've been doing a lot of groundwork behind the scenes to get this working and now it is finally working correctly. So, uh, you can see I've just taken off, I've got a little testing flight plan in, and uh, you can see that right now on the PFD, we have our V2 plus 10 speed, which is magenta because it's the FMS computed speed, and pitch is in white, indicating that we are not in FMS speed. So, when you are above 400 feet radio altitude, you can now push FMS speed. So let's unpause the sim and do that. And you can see when that happens, our speed went dashed, our bug went away, and this became magenta, which indicates that FMS speed is now controlling the airspeed. So, when that happens, you can still adjust the knob to bring the bug back, and if I want to, I can select another speed, and you can return to FMS speed at any time by pressing the button. Okay, climb thrust is engaging as usual. You can see the engines roll back to the climb limit. And if we click the perf page on the MCDU, let's go down here and pause, you can see the different options that we have for climb. We have our econ mode, and the Mach number is computed based on our cruising altitude. So currently, I have a cruising altitude of 5,000 feet set. As a result, we have a pretty low Mach number uh, set here. Now, I should note that because our cruise altitude is under 10,000 feet, it will never actually accelerate to these speeds it will stay at our speed limit of 250 knots, or V-climb, whichever is higher. However, if our cruise altitude was above 5,000 feet, it will accelerate, and I will show this later in the video. We also have max climb mode, which provides the best climb rate, uh, the speed for the best climb rate, or we can select an edit climb. We can also go here to the pre-select page to select our cruise settings, and here the descent page. When we reach our acceleration altitude, which you can see here is 3,018 feet, you will notice that it will automatically advance to 250. The nose will lower, and it's going to accelerate. So we're past the flap retract, so let's go ahead and bring the flaps up. And we are passing slap retract, so let's bring the slats up. You can see we are currently climbing to an altitude of 30,000 feet, and when we cross 10,000 feet, it will automatically accelerate from our limit of 250 to our econ climb speed there of 312 in this case. Since we now have a much higher cruise altitude, you can see that our Mach number has been increased to a more suitable value for that flight level. As we climb, altitude. you'll see that it will automatically switch to Mach when appropriate, based on the climb Mach. So as you can see, it switched to 0.806, and we're now climbing at the appropriate Mach number until we reach our cruise altitude. We've now transitioned to the cruise phase, and in the MCDU, we can specify another speed. We can specify IAS, or we can specify a different Mach number just like in climb and descent. If you press FMS speed while it is engaged, it will return to econ automatically. When beginning the descent, it will switch to the descent mode automatically. You will see that the aircraft is tracking our 806 mock target. During the descent, the aircraft will automatically switch back to IAS when appropriate. As you can see, when hitting our 312 econ speed, we've switched over. These econ speeds will vary based on your weight, cost index, cruise level, and other factors. When crossing about 11,000 feet, the aircraft will automatically decelerate to 245 knots. This is an MD-11-ism where it maintains about 5 knots lower than the speed limit in order to ensure that the speed limit is not violated. Due to the aircraft's light weight, the descent rate becomes very shallow while this deceleration occurs. However, if the aircraft is heavier, 
it may maintain a further descent rate while decelerating. The system is programmed to ensure that you reach 245 knots before crossing 10,000 feet so that it will never overrun the restriction. We've, we're on our localizer now and you can see we've started our automatic deceleration. If I head to the approach page you can see our V approach is 152 so this is what we are going to be decelerating to. The aircraft is currently clean so we're accelerating to our clean speed plus 20. I'm now going to extend the sluts. And you can see when this happens our speed reduces of course, the speed targets are limited by the V-min bar there, but the target becomes our slat plus 20, slat minimum plus 20. I'm also going to now extend to flat 15, which does not change the target. Glide slope is coming up. We're going to do gear down and flaps 28, which reduces the speed further. We will be at the flap 28 minimum plus 5, again limited by V-min until it reaches there, and we've now captured our glide slope. We're now going to select flaps 35, and now our speed has reduced to our V approach. Let's say it's a windy day. We can go ahead and type, say, a higher number in, and you can see that FMS speed will listen to that request and increase the airspeed. When performing a landing, FMS speed remains engaged until the nose gear touches down. You can see that retard is displayed, but we still have our magenta bug. But once the nose gear touches down, we get a blinking retard, and you can see we have our white select bug now, and our speed selection has returned, indicating that FMS speed is no longer active. As always, this is an ongoing development. There may be things that I've made mistakes in, gotten inaccurate, or need to fix, but I wanted to give you all a taste of what's coming with FMS speed. So I hope you enjoyed this video.